Welcome everyone to a new tough talk. And today I have a special guest uh, that I would like to introduce. And uh, it's Nick Johnson. And what I really love with you, Nick, is uh, many things, but primary that you are a very honest person. Uh, I like your story, person development story. And I feel yeah, that you are very authentic uh and that's reason number one i believe that you can inspire in this talk but also many other people with what you are doing so uh that's number one i want to say about you nick uh you are a network uh, expert you uh are athletic you are you will probably talk more about that uh doing iron man and you are author to a best-selling book about ceo loneliness and um and that's part of our talk today. Um, Nick, we will talk about the journey as a person, as a leader, that are not always going after the plan. Could you, I mean, we are going to talk about loneliness, we are talking about sadness, uh, or that things are not always going the, in the direction that we want. Could you please start introducing yourself and say a little bit about your background, Nick? Absolutely. Thank you, first of all, Morten, for inviting me here and for having this conversation, an important conversation. So I was born not far away from you, across the bridge in Sweden. Uh, then I was educated in Australia and I lived and worked the last 20 years in Southeast Asia. That's where I'm these days are running confidential peer groups for senior executives. I'm also doing coaching and I'm speaking and doing workshops. Uh, so why am I in this space? What happened? Well, I would say that society set me up and set many people up for success. I was chasing success, elbowing my way up to the top from an account executive, account manager, account director, general manager, then managing director, leading big companies. I had everything on the outside. Uh, if you look at it, the per perfect package, the car, the houses, the packages that a senior leader want. But once I was there, I wasn't happy. And that's perhaps a little bit of an intro to my story. And we can delve into what happened. And as I had a collapse uh, coming from the top all the way down. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know that uh, I'm working on a book right now, a new book, where I will describe 60 years, maybe, hunt for success, recognition, and uh, happiness. And, uh, and uh, with the ups and downs, in my life story, and uh, also a wake-up call, many wake-up calls that have made me uh, think about what is success actually, and can it change over a lifetime? So something happens, then you change your description uh, because of that. So so uh, I'm very much uh, involved in that journey myself. Um, so. Uh, so how will you um, how will you describe your your life story, and uh, and also how your success definition were in the beginning when you started your journey? How was that? I'm talking about the past, uh, yeah. Nick, the old Nick. <laughs> Yeah, so the old Nick was all about getting the promotions, getting the bonuses, and it was more about me than others. It was very little about the team spirit, and I could deliver at a high level and impressing the bosses most of the time. But, you know, once the games and the stakes are high, you need a team also behind you. And if you have not been treating your team the best, if you've been driving them hard, but they perhaps didn't know you as a real person and you weren't human to them, Perhaps then when they see that you're making mistakes, mistakes, maybe they let it slip and they don't have you back. And when that's showing up in your clients and you're perhaps missing out on some big business, then it's coming back at you. And that's what happened with me. And with those mistakes, I lost some confidence in myself. And I thought it was better to resign from a job rather than being terminated because I had been terminated twice before from jobs. Uh, and, and, and that led me to a lot of insecurities. And I was just filled with fear anxiety and suddenly i lost uh, all my confidence mm. so so uh, a kind of inner pain or uh, what would you say a loneliness and uh, separation from people around you and all that is that what you were saying also 
Well, if you lose the connection with yourself and you're not comfortable with yourself, then naturally you push other people away or you, you are quite shallow. And my way to cope with that was uh, what many busy executives do. Uh, I was coping by trying to reduce the stress. And instead of eating healthy and exercise, I lost my healthy routines and I ended up on a bar stool. So my way then to, you know, relieve stress after a busy day of work was going to the bar, drinking some beer with friends, but not discussing the issues, not dealing with the issues, not getting a coach or a mentor to address them, instead just putting them away. And of course, the issues were there the next day and they were getting bigger and bigger until I couldn't cope anymore. Yeah. Yeah, in my past, I have been taking painkillers so I could not feel my uh, uh, pain or my feelings. So uh, that made me uh, very stressed, uh, very close to being very, very sick. So I know that uh, is not the, the strategy. Uh, so... Um, what what would you say is your biggest mistake in the past and what did you learn from it, Meg? Yeah, the biggest mistake was not to surround myself with peers and being open and transparent with them. I didn't have a personal network of friends who I was vulnerable with. I had fantastic friends. We played golf, we watched sport, we were drinking beer. We were doing what many men are doing and we had great times and I would consider them very close friends. And in fact, my boss at the time was also a good friend of mine, but I never shared the issues or the pain or the challenges I had. I kept them secret. And likewise, on the professional side, I didn't have a coach. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't belong to a mastermind group or peer group. So I didn't have this support network built up for myself. So once something mistakes came, I had no one to go to, no one to talk to. And if I went to the team, perhaps uh, I had lost the team's faith as well at that time. So therefore, I became very lonely, very isolated. So that's my biggest mistake by not being proactive, because once things are going so well, it's very easy to become self-centered and we just take all the wins and we think I don't need it. And of course, people reached out asking me if I wanted a coach, if I wanted to join this and that. And I didn't. I only joined networking evenings, but networking nights around food and drinks and coming out there and, 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 and enjoying myself, socializing literally, because I wasn't ready to go deep yet. And that was the biggest mistakes I ever done. Mm. How long time is uh, this back in the, the past? Uh, when, when, did you, uh, when did you actually uh, start changing your journey? Uh, to the new Nick. It came in 2018. And at that stage, I became quite sick. Uh, I had then for about two, three years going down slowly, gradually. And you don't really realize it because step by step, you're putting on some weight and your habits are changing for the worse. And but a bad habit before you know it can turn into an addiction. And that's certainly what happened. Alcohol became a big problem for me at this stage. And I hit what I call my rock bottom. It was the, the, the phase when I just couldn't go on anymore. The pain was so much inside me that it actually started to show up on my body. My left foot swallowed. Uh, and it was only later a psychologist diagnosed this as a psychosomatic illness, which basically means that so much anxiety inside me that it was showing up on the outside. I could hardly put on my foot at this stage. And that was the moment when I couldn't cope anymore. And I decided to start speaking up about it in close, small circles. And the first one I told was uh, a woman who today is my uh, wife, uh, Donna. I told her how I felt. And with that, I was on my road back into recovery. Yeah. So, so that's the first, actually, that's part of the first step to, to be honest and, and uh, talk with somebody from that place where you feel secure and have that uh, uh, around you is that also what you're saying yeah it is exactly right yeah. yes and um, after I spoke to her she listened with empathy I started to get some confidence she brought me to a doctor and she helped me to share my story to the doctor the doctor also were able to listen with sympathy give me some medication then we walked home to a friend of us who had had some similar issues in the past and again, we shared my story to this person. This person picked up the phone and, and called a few people and on it went. And on that, people just opened up, wanted to listen, wanted to help. So I had what they call perhaps in economy, a V-shaped recovery. So from coming rock bottom to being really bad, I was fully alive, living already my best days very quickly. And 
going back to that difficult time and and i changed all my bad habits into good habits again and and uh, i haven't for example had a urge to have a drink i haven't had an alcohol drink since and it's almost six years now ah okay so so if you should describe the new uh, you like a, a new success definition after this episode here what would you say is your success definition now it's being well-rounded and not putting all eggs in one basket for example before my success was too much relying on just a career driving it too hard there but when you lose that you have nothing else it was really about finding myself being well balanced and you not be so self-centered and really then having work is one thing but your friends being vulnerable open with them so you have warmer relationship your professional work your colleagues be more human be yourself be authentic connect better with them then i joined running clubs cycling clubs i joined triathlon clubs and i joined many charities volunteering so i'm surrounded with basically 10 different organizations where i'm of uh, where i'm keep adding value keep being of service and being myself when i show up so i feel like instead of having just one pocket which is the work and so many people especially senior leaders define themselves in the work i now have perhaps a well-rounded life with 10 different uh, parts so so did you not have those interests before uh, this wake up call uh, was it totally new for you to start that new journey uh, or what no i had them before i was already running marathons doing ironman athletes events and so on but i didn't surround myself with coaches and mentors and i wasn't open i wasn't vulnerable and therefore it was very painful i made a lot of mistakes and we're talking a full distance ironman when you don't do it properly then it's a lot of pain i ended up in hospital you know cramping too much in one race because i didn't really know what was the right nutrition i was acting like i had all the answers when we know that that's not really true so i just changed the way i approached every single network by being myself being of service and asking questions and being open to learn hmm. it sounds like a keyword in this discussion is support to have the right support around yourself uh, that could be your wife that could be uh, everyone to have the right support and uh, you yeah. have a lot of experience with other people from from your 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 networking uh, experience um how do you see the situation with other like ceos and leaders um how is the the, the situation out there <laughs> around what we're talking about do you see that a lot what you also have experienced Yeah, so to different degrees, many people have similar issues. And I, when I wrote my book, Executive Loneliness, I interviewed senior leaders, I surveyed leaders, and I found that about 30% of the leaders actually agreed to that they suffer from isolation or feelings of loneliness in the workplace. So that's a huge number. We're talking three in 10 people who actually agree at the senior level, at the CEO level to feeling isolated. So obviously, that's a big chunk of people who are behaving or having the same kind of mindset as I had, perhaps driving themselves too hard, focusing too much on what they can do rather than how they can be supportive of others. So uh, and that is the issue and that's the gap that we need to bridge because ultimately if we don't address this, then we fall into bad habits, we fall into uh, sickness, illnesses, we fall into addictions and we've at the most extreme end and sadly we, we we see this more and more is the suicide because if people don't have a way out and if they're not being proactive about developing the authenticity not being vulnerable not having these safe spaces then when it goes really bad and life can hit us hard then we are not ready and then we don't know how to behave and and that's sadly when we might lose someone who's dear yeah and how practical how do you use a coach today i mean uh Uh, how much uh, do you have uh, this coaching yourself? I know you also, I believe, are coaching others. But uh, how is your own? Uh, how is your own support process now? Fully surrounded of coaches and mentors. In fact, my previous call just before we went on this call, Martin, was with one of my coaches. Then after this is the next call with one of my other coaches in another field. I keep working with uh, running coaches, 
triathlon coaches, swim coaches, an overall coach on my whole fitness, nutritionist, specialist. I even work with coaches and mentors, how to be a better father. I have a teenage son with my ex-wife. How can I do better there? And it's about learning in every area, in the personal area. Professionally, I'm working with speaking coaches on my speaking career. I also work on my coaching career with coaches. The coach also need a coach. And I worked with uh, John Matone in the last year, who was the coach of Steve Jobs. Uh, I gone through the same kind of questions as Steve Jobs did when he was on the deathbed, uh, when he wanted to find his legacy and purpose in life. So I, uh, the, my whole life is surrounded by this these days. Could you come up with a good question around legacy? Something that you have been facing from your experience. Do we have like a, a very good question that you you could uh, give to others that are, are listening and watching this video? What could be a good question? Well, I think it's very important for everyone to know their purpose. And I spoke at an event yesterday in Singapore, sales leaders, and I asked who in here know their purpose in life. And in a quite big audience, there was only one hand going up. I was quiet then and I left it like that. And I let everyone sitting there thinking about that for a moment. So uh, I want to ask all the listeners today, and honestly, uh, do you have a purpose for yourself? Mm. And if you don't, perhaps it's worth looking at that. Because if you don't, then you're going to end up like Steve Jobs one day at the deathbed asking you what's your purpose. So let's do it today. And I think it's very important to, to actually ask that question more than once all your lifetime because uh, like success definition can change. Your purpose can also change. Uh, it's a little bit like also when, uh, when I experienced being a father, my success definition uh, and purpose were also reflecting my role as a father and so on when I became sick uh, of cancer and I'm over that, it's success, so that's good, but it also changed. So over time, our lifetime, we need to stop and have a time out. Do you agree and ask ourselves some serious questions so we are on the right track? Uh, because it's, how do you see it? Absolutely, you're spot on, Martin. We need to constantly look at this, and this is what I do uh, with my coaches, I review, I have even written a purpose statement and then I fixed goals which are linked to my purpose statement for all my key areas of my life. And then I work with my coach to develop an action plan for each of these with measurable timelines. So uh, another thought-provoking question perhaps to all the listeners is, uh, do you also have goals for yourself which are linked to then your purpose? And if not, it might be time to work with a coach to do that because if you also ask yourself, what about in the workplace? Imagine if you have a company, you have no KPIs, no goals, nothing to measure in the company. What would that business look like? Would it be successful? Most likely not. So what about for yourself? Are you running around blind like a headless chicken in your life? And uh, you just do whatever the universe serves you? Or do you have some kind of direction so that you end up where you want to go? Hmm. Uh, when when you talk about all your activities, uh, how do you how do you handle all that? It's like uh, some will say, "Oh, that's a lot. Uh, be careful that you are not going to be stressed." How do you handle all that uh, activities that you have around you? <laughs> yeah, so self leadership and self care and self love is at the center of everything. And uh, I have uh, blocked three hours out of my day. Every day for the rest of my life. It's on recurrence for the rest of my life. And it's in the morning, the morning slots there from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. every day. And that is a slot for me. It's for my meditation, for my prayer, for exercise, for anything self-love, writing my daily gratitude list which I share with some people. And that I'm not very flexible on. If someone is negotiating with that, they have to negotiate hard because that's the time for myself. And if something comes in, then then I really will really reschedule it to late in the day or break it up. So I have those three hours a day per myself and should for some reason one day completely be gone, then I will make up for it on the weekend by taking six hours one day and taking half a day off to do self-care and self-love. So we have to take care of ourselves first before we jump into all of this busy lifestyle. Yeah. It also sounds like you have a personality type that really have... Uh structure or have the 
willpower to to uh, to do and uh, schedule and do things and do the actions and all that. So so many people also like me, uh, I have to admit, uh, I don't necessarily have that in my personality type. So so what would you say to people that uh, don't have that uh, um, inside themselves? Um, is that support again? No, I think it's not something that I was born with. I just been curious and curious learner all my life and reading books and everything I spoke with about here about um, uh, goal setting and blocking time and so on uh, is uh, from Brian Tracy. Uh, I even uh, flew him from US to Vietnam to run a workshop for my clients and team a few years ago. I read all his books, everything from Eat That Frog, which is about procrastination to setting goals. And I even uh, gave a book on goal setting to my son. I'm coaching my son on goal setting and I share that with everyone. So this is not something that come natural to me. This is something I learned and something that I will do every day for the rest of my life. Wow. It's really in inspiring to have a talk with you. Uh, do you have like uh, the, do you have the last, the last thing that you would like to, to, uh, to say or give as a gift to, to the audience? Like, uh, uh, are there like a three step, are there a recipe, are there a good advice or something that are missing that you would like to end this talk saying to, to, to the audience and also to me? Uh, what would that be? Yeah, sure. Yeah, never go to bed with something on your mind. Uh, clear it during the day. And I keep post-it notes and pen and paper everywhere around my desk, uh, work desk, bed table, whatever. If something is there, write it down and trust that you can deal with it later or tomorrow uh, so that you can have a fresh mind and get a good night's sleep without worrying. And should it be that you wake up in the middle of the night because there's something on your mind, just write it down and trust that you will deal with it later. And this is something that really worked for me. Just let it go and, and have some trust in universe and yourself and just live in the moment. And that is what, what works for me. And I, I just live a day at a time and that is the best way of living. I have no regrets of the past and no anxiety in the future when I'm living like this. I like it. I really love that uh, end of our tough talk here. And uh, in the, the this um, post, I would like to have your contact details written so we can uh, have uh, the possibility of reaching out to you and uh, get in contact with you so uh, and follow you uh, on with some of your your fantastic inspiration but for now nick thank you so much for joining this uh, tough talk and uh, give inspiration to me and many others so uh, thank you for that thank you also martin and thanks to the listeners yeah take care